Auchincloss is the vice chairman of the Financial Services Committee. He also serves uh, on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and from a family of, of underachievers, uh, Congressman, uh, just looking at uh, Dr. Glimcher and uh, you were a Quantico a trained Marine and uh, I guess Sloan at, uh, at MIT. So you're, you're educated, it's an MBA from Sloan. Is that, have I got that right too? So I'm not gonna take any, any, any uh, talking points. You know better than some of the stuff we're hearing <laughs> from both sides on economics. You know how crazy some of it is. I'm like, that's true, isn't it? Well, good morning, thanks for having me on. And we do need sober-minded policymaking on economics right now. Okay. Uh, the president's been clear that inflation is his top priority as it should be because Americans are in pain right now. Uh, and we need to expand the productive capacity of the economy to keep up. Uh, the economy is running hot right now. It grew faster than China for the first time in my lifetime. Eight million jobs created. Uh, but on the supply side, we're having a hard time keeping up. We have got to cut red tape for housing. We've got to uh, implement an all of the above energy investment policy uh, to achieve clean energy independence. And we need both more legal immigration and more labor force participation from Americans uh, who have been out of the workforce for the last several years. All right. Uh, what I was referencing initially and what I was leading into, it, it won't be quite as uh, uh, talking points oriented from the, from the, uh, the Democratic side of things. On an, uh, an op-ed you wrote a while ago, Republicans have been politicizing inflation while Dems work to fix it. You've heard what President Biden has been saying about inflation, uh, Congressman. And as I said, you have MBA from Sloan. Aren't there times where, where you'd like to talk to him and say, Mr. President, that's clearly not true, and that, that you're, you're demagoguing a lot of these issues. Do you, do you think that oil companies are just gouging? Do you think food companies don't need to raise prices uh, when, when input costs rise and, and they're just profiteering? Do you think the, pr the problem in all this is just greedy capitalists that are, that are causing, uh, that, that don't necessarily have to, it's not a free market, it's, it's not that they're just responding to input costs and therefore raising well, prices? The president the president is expressing the frustration of the American people and of many of us. Uh, food, energy, these are global markets. They have geopolitical and geoeconomic dimensions. Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, caused seizures in both the energy and food sides of the house here. And as you well know, the president doesn't have levers in the Oval Office that can control those things on a dime. Uh, what it does highlight is that we need an all of the above clean energy investment strategy, well, geothermal, fusion, small modular reactors. This needs to be a clarion call that the a, United States cannot be subject to Saudi Arabia and Iran and Venezuela. Congressman, that's an oxymoron, all of the above clean energy. <laughs> clean energy, we spent trillions of dollars on renewables and it's at one or two percent of global energy. So all of the above clean energy, just say all of the above energy. Are you, are you saying that only clean energy or do you, should we do more uh, drilling? Should we continue to open leases? Should we reopen Anwar? Should we do the Keystone Pipeline? All the things that we've put a damper on, is that what all of the above means to you? We clearly need natural gas as a bridge technology and nothing is stopping uh, right now, oil companies no, no. from uh, executing on the, on the permits that they have. But be, be, let's be very clear here. For as long as the United States is dependent on oil, it means that we have to make phone calls to Saudi Arabia and Iran and Venezuela when times get tight. We need to have energy dominance here at home, and we need to have a clean energy future that does not sacrifice our kids' welfare uh, just for right. lower gas prices. The best case scenario for not being dependent on oil in terms of years in your view, is what? Two years, five years, 10 years, 30 years, 50 years, what is it? We are sailing towards the North Star of clean energy independence and there's gonna be uh, waves and wind along the way that we've gotta navigate. Well, uh, is it 10 we, years? It is clearly is it, a generational it, challenge. When do you think we can Let get me put it this oil. way. 10 Let years, Let me put it this way. Years? I okay. do not want my kids dependent on oil from countries like Russia and Saudi Arabia. That well, we, challenge starts now. That's my generation's obligation. Well, then we definitely aren't doing what it takes in this country to, to keep us not dependent on foreign dictators. We're over hat in hand to Saudi Arabia and Venezuela, and we're not opening up the spigots here, uh, Congressman. We're heading towards, as I said, we are sailing towards the North Star of clean energy independence, but that requires investments in energy here at home. Let me give you one example. 
Uh, the eastern seaboard of the United States could be the offshore wind leader in the entire world. The president's got a plan for 30 gigawatts by 2030. There is an amendment snaking its way through Congress right now that would derail those plans. And we need both parties to come together with the White House and prevent that amendment from becoming law so that we can achieve offshore wind dominance here in the United States, create good jobs, create 30 gigawatts of clean energy on the eastern seaboard. In terms of, uh, uh, we'll switch gears a little bit, in terms of the Federal Reserve, what, what do you think they need to do right now? And, and do you think that we printed too much? Is that part of, what, of the inflation that we're seeing right now? And it is global. How much do you think it's too many dollars um, chasing too few goods after the pandemic, supply chain, whatever you want to call it? And, and maybe, you know, we needed to respond to the pandemic. Did we uh, respond too much to that? Is there, did, did we overdo it or some of it didn't find it to the right place so that we've created this problem ourselves? Well, when I questioned Chairman Powell when he came to the Financial Services Committee for our oversight hearings, what I pressed him on was not just his credibility in lowering expected inflation, but also in the Fed's credibility in preventing unexpected inflation. The only thing more painful than high inflation is high unexpected inflation. And he has been clear that he keeps the Fed's credibility as a price stability institution um, as his number one priority. Now, I'm not gonna comment on individual Fed decisions. They're an autonomous body. But almost a year ago, I made clear that the era of easy money needed to come to an end. We've gotta raise interest rates. It's not letting the president and Congress off the hook because energy, food, housing, these are not monetary phenomenon. These are real world phenomenon. And we're gonna have to come to geoeconomic and domestic policy solutions to address them as well. But we need Republicans to come to the table and work with us. Uh, what I've heard from Republicans in the last six months is them tying themselves in knot over guns and abortion and Trump instead of reaching across the table and saying, yeah, how can we expand housing produ production and cut red tape? Uh, how can we work with you on expanding labor force participation and expanding legal immigration? How can we get uh, uh, some votes on the Republican side for Medicare negotiation of drug prices, which will lower out-of-pocket costs for senior citizens? We're going to do that in a party-line vote. Why aren't Republicans there with us? That lowers costs at the kitchen table. Congressman, would you have, uh, or do you still support some type of Build Back uh, Better, a, a neo Build Back Better, maybe a, a trillion dollar plan? Do you think we should, it should include tax hikes in, in an economy that uh, at this point seems to be slowing? Well, I, I'm not gonna comment on uh, nebulous legislation. What I will say is I supported Build Back Better last year and I support a progressive tax code that funnels some of those uh, revenue streams into clean energy tax investments. And I support Medicare negotiation of drug prices when done thoughtfully, that can both incentivize biomedical innovation, which is critical to my home state here in Massachusetts, that can help us get to cures for Alzheimer's and cancer and diabetes. And it can also lower out of pocket costs for Americans uh, who are struggling, especially Medicare beneficiaries with those premiums and those out of pocket costs. Congressman, I'm still thinking about the exchange that you had with Joe about uh, the president's tweets and, and placing the blame on, on oil companies and, and also the notion that you think that inflation is becoming politicized. That sounds like inflation is becoming politicized and that tweet came straight from the White House. Do you think, and this is a direct question, do you think that oil companies are simply profiteering? Or do I think they oil also companies have been higher costs? And I, I, you know, I mean, this is just, this is what happens in a free market. So two things can be true at the same time. One is that Russia's invasion of Ukraine was a se se severe supply side shock mm -hmm. for global oil markets. And yes, they are global. And two is that big oil has been poorly run for at least a decade now. And Wall Street investors will be the first ones to tell you that. They have not done good capital allocation. And instead of taking an inward look at how they have made investments, they're blaming uh, permitting regulations and environmental rules that are meant to keep clean air and clean water. Uh, I find that very unimpressive. Uh, but most of all, I do not want my kids to be having the same conversation as I'm having right now with you. I want us to have uh, clean energy independence as a country. I, and I that understand means that. That's, a transition. That's the road, that's the North Star that you keep citing. And I, I understand having a long-term plan. Um, and I'm all for having a long-term plan in order to get this country to be energy independent, period. Um, but when we say that you know, prices at the pump are too high and that gas stations should lower the costs and blaming the 
you know, placing the blame on refiners. I mean, refiners really don't own too many of the gas stations. I, I just don't understand what the point of this messaging is to the American people. If, if your point is that we need politicians in Washington to come together and solve problems, I am totally on board. As you said, it, I went on Fox News uh, almost a year ago to propose bipartisan solutions for rising costs. That was back when inflation was projected at 4%. Uh, so the urgency has only increased. And we know what we need to be doing. We've got to cut red tape for housing. We need to make more investments in energy. We need more labor force participation. So much of what we're seeing across the economy is that we've got one American worker looking for every two open jobs right now. That means we need more illegal immigration and we need more people to get back to the workforce. Uh, I'm, I'm on board for all of that. All of those initiatives that I just described could be bipartisan, uh, but the president does not really have a good faith negotiating partner right now in Congress. All right, uh, Congressman, we're gonna end it there. I'm, I'm just thrown back into, uh, you know where the star market is right there on, on the Mass Pike? I used to live right, right across from there in Newtonville. So you're- you, I used you, to work there growing up. <laughs> it's <laughs> over. Maybe he bagged your groceries, Joe. I did. <laughs> that, that could have, and then the other thing I was gonna talk to you about was, you know, quanti or just, just boot camp. I mean, did you ever, you never, did, I would cry if I went to Marine, I would. I just wonder, does any, do any recruits ever cry in, in Marine boot camp? Do you ever see that? Did they quit? Did you ever feel like saying, I'm out of here? Because I, I can't imagine I could have gotten through that. Part of the point is that the only people who graduate are the ones who don't quit. That's right, that's right. That's why I'm here and, and, and you're there. Anyway, uh, it, 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 thank you for your service. Admirable, it, from, coming from his family, going into the, into the Marines. Congressman Auchincloss, hope to see you again uh, uh, soon. And um, I think we were walking around the same part of, uh, of Cambridge, too, at Long one work. point. Yeah, Kendall Square. Have a good morning. All right, you too. Coming up, the FDA temporarily suspending a ban on Juul e-cigarettes less than a month after ordering the company to pull its products from the market. We'll get the details next, plus much more on yesterday's tech bounce back and what investors should be watching today. Take a look at this morning's biggest winners and losers on the Nasdaq in the pre-market session. Spock Box, be right